On this episode of Mighty Car Mods, it's all about water to air intercoolers, getting an ECU on this car and getting it started. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Work on the MR2 has been progressing really well. This is it though. This episode, the car's gonna get started. I'm even gonna tune it if I can. Um, there's a few mods that are gonna happen today which are pretty exciting. This is the water to air intercooler off Miss Daisy. If you wanna see what video that's all about, check it out. It's where we did a really crazy fast time in an old VW Beetle. Um, I'm gonna install this onto the car. I've also got an ECU coming that will run the whole thing. And this episode, there's a whole bunch of making stuff, which is, the most enjoyable and sometimes hardest bit. Let's do it. A few years back, we pieced together this Volkswagen Beetle Superbug that started with a stock standard 23.9 kilowatts. We added a built EJ25 engine out of a Subaru WRX, attached a turbo, resulting in 10 times the power. We took it to the drags and chopped a Porsche. It was fast, probably too fast to be safe to drive. So we pulled the mods out and moved the shell on. It used a water to air intercooler, which I've been holding onto for just the right project. And this crusty MR2 is a perfect candidate. Keeping this project under budget is proving tough with how much stuff is broken. But I'm hoping by recycling some parts, I'm gonna be close. Water to air intercooling. Now it's something that you don't see as much these days from manufacturers, but early Subaru Liberties used to use it. This happens to be the water to air system off our VW Beetle. Now, hot boosty air goes in this side. You've got a water jacket that surrounds that core and then you get cooler air out here. Now, air to air intercooling, you see much more of it. It's definitely cheaper and it's definitely simpler and in a lot of cases more effective, but this is all about packaging. This allows you to put this core sort of anywhere you want up in the engine bay. Then all you've got to do is run hoses to this, essentially is a radiator with a fan on it. You can run your hoses up to it and the cool air comes through here, cools down the coolant. Coolant gets sent way back to the other end of the car up into here and cools your charge air. That's all made possible by a pump which constantly pumps coolant around the system. You can control when this turns on and off. And again, it's all about the packaging and the ability to use this stuff to make it fit your car perfectly. Now, I've never done a custom setup of these before, so I'm learning along with everyone. Um, but I'm excited to see how it goes. I know it's good for regulating temperature, maybe not as big a drops that you'd see with air to air, but being that the nature of this car, the engine's behind your head, it's kind of a cool reason to use it. So let's do it. The mission is to get hot air from the outlet of the turbo over to the throttle body via the intercooler. It needs to clear the bonnet, it can't rub on anything, I'll need to put mounts on it, and I'll need to mix and match joiners to make it fit. There's a bit of trial and error involved and lots of staring to try and visualize how it's all gonna work. It's also a good idea to measure everything, something that I didn't quite do enough of. As soon as you go down this path, everything is custom as nothing is in the stock location. So the original rubber bends probably won't work. Luckily, you can get silicon joiners in all sorts of shapes and sizes. I've seen some really creative and interesting ways that people have done water to air on these kind of cars. Now you've got a fair bit of space actually over here, particularly in this area where it's quite cool and you're not near the hot exhaust housing of the turbo. There's some like triangular ones where it sort of uses that whole space and you have your air out of the turbo on this side and then straight back out that way. That is by far the neatest way to do this. Um, being that I'm recycling parts, um, I have to be a little bit more creative about where I put it and use silicons to make it work. I think that this location is actually going to work the best. I've got to do a bit of a loop to get back to the turbo, but I don't want to clock the factory turbo, partly because it's a pain to get it off and partly because it gives you options that if you ever want to put a inner air to air intercooler on this, you can. You can just bolt it straight in and everything's in the right place. Um, so rather than mess up that whole setup, I can just use like a $10 silicon to make it do what I want it to do. Now, unfortunately the outlet's 2.75 inches. I didn't realize, I thought it was three. I looked at it and went, yeah, that's three inch. No, always measure. So I've got to get a different silicon for there. Um, but everything else looks like it's gonna work pretty well. So now it's just a matter of mounting this up and then getting the silicons onto it. And then once they're on and it's in place, plumb it into the front of the car. This is much more difficult than buying a bolt-in kit, but it keeps costs down and occasionally it's good to push your limits and have to problem solve and be a bit creative. Once I've worked out where the core needs to go, the next step is to bend up some steel to mount it.
need to custom make one pipe to complete the bend around to the inlet side of the cooler. I'm making it out of two and a half inch stainless steel, which I can then TIG weld together. Once that's in place, I can work out where the coolant hoses are gonna go. The cooler comes with 3 quarter inch outlets or 19 millimetres in the metric world. It's a common hose size and also happens to be a common house plumbing size, so fittings are available from hardware stores, meaning expensive specialised fittings are not required. Working out this water to air intercooling system is tricky. I really want the radiator at the front of the car where all the cold air is. A lot of people put it in the back, which is actually pretty cool that you can do that. You sort of hang the radiator down and catch the air at the back of the car um, because then you don't have to run these big long pipes. So I'm going to use a combination of hose, 19 mil internal diameter hose and uh, copper. That's a really common plumbing size, so it's cheap and easy to get. Well, it's not cheap because it's copper, but it's easy to bend and work with and perfect for this kind of thing. The trick I'm having at the moment is trying to run it out of the way, the steering, as tied up to the bottom of the car as I can get. Um, and once I've sort of worked out the bends, I'll start to put bits of straight pipe in so it's a bit neater. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fun actually. Bit different, bit different to making an air to air into cooler, that's for sure. So hopefully it works. The internet is full of arguments about how best to do this kind of thing. Aluminium hardline is a good and possibly cheaper solution, but not as readily available in this size. Copper is a soft metal, which is why it's so easy to bend and to work with. But will it last long term in the harsh environment under the car? I guess we'll have to find out. If it breaks and the water comes out, worst case the inlet temperatures go up, which you can set alarms for and tuning strategies in the ECU. It's easy to get forced into inaction by too many differing opinions. Sometimes trying things yourself and learning from the experience is the best way to expand your own skill set. All the hoses have been run. I'm quite happy with how that's turned out. You can't go to the shops and ask for MR2 water to air intercooler line clips. So I'm gonna to have to come up with something a bit better. For now it's in place and that's good. Um, the next thing I need to do is work out where the pump's gonna go. This is what makes the whole system work by pushing the cold water up into the heat exchanger at the engine. And then obviously the hot water at the front cycles it all around and makes it all work. There's a good spot for it behind the radiator. I need to try and see if I can get the heat exchanger for the front of the car in front of the radiator. I've seen people do it both ways. In front makes more sense, but I just have to see how it goes with packaging. There may not actually be possible. So either way, I'm gonna find a spot for this pump and plumb it in. The radiator fans require a little bit of trimming to sit against the aftermarket radiator. I need them in place so I know how much clearance I have for the pump, lines and associated hardware. With the pump mounted, next I need to install the water to air radiator. The front bumper has to come off as it can only go in from underneath. Then I need to sneak some bent up hard pipe to in front of the engine coolant radiator to make it all work. Of course, the bumper is full of rusted out fasteners, so getting it off is a total pain. monumental fight with that front bumper bar. I cannot believe how hard this car fights back to anything you try to do to it. Um, just where the bolts are, it wants you to take the headlights out, um, which on a normal car is a couple of bolts. These are a little bit more complicated being big flippy uppy ones. So I was trying to avoid that. Usually that's what gets you in trouble when you're trying to avoid doing the obvious, which would be take the lights out. Anyway, I didn't, but it's off. Um, the next step is to put this heat exchanger 
in here somewhere. We're going to leave the fan on if possible. Um, one of the horns isn't connected and hasn't been for a long time, so I'm going to get rid of it. Should buy me enough space, sit it hard against the radiator, mount it, plumb it, bump it back on. Mounted. It's a bit of a compromise between getting the core in a position where you're going to get airflow into it, it's not going to foul anything, and you're also going to get enough head on that pump because that pump needs a head of water sort of sitting on the impeller all the time. So this bottom one is the one that drains out. So the hot water goes into the top, cools down, comes back out here, the cold water sits on the pump and the pump sends it up to the engine where the turbo does its whooshy whizzy things and everyone has a good time. So now it's just got to get this hose up into there, only not like that. Well, that could work, couldn't it? Fixed, done, easy. A piece of welding wire bent into the appropriate shape makes a good template to then try and recreate using the tube bender. This keeps a fairly even radius for the bends. It's not perfect, but it sure is easy and do it yourself. A tube cutter makes neat cuts and then any really sharp bends can be achieved using pre-made 90 degree bends that can be soldered in place. This is the same way the setup was running Miss Daisy and supported 260 kilowatts, no problem at all. Really happy with the progress that's been made. The water to air intercooler is coming together really nicely. So now I'm at the stage of just sort of piecing everything back together and making some hoses, all the fun stuff. The really fun stuff is about to happen though. And it's time to put in an ECU. So pull the car down off the hoist. The ECU is in a really interesting spot in these cars as well. It's not where you'd normally expect them to be, not under a kick panel in the front, not under the bonnet. No, it is in the boot. G'day mate. As is David. Who's gonna help me do it? Hey man. Hey, how are you? How are you? Going? Is, that, is that ECU in the craziest spot you've ever seen? It's bizarre. I've it's so convenient. never seen an ECU that convenient. Are you really comfortable in, a car, in there as ever. well? This is not too bad actually. Do you know the internet actually helped me with this because I was struggling to work on the engine and then someone said, take the, the boot off mm. and sit in the boot. To work it's on genius. this. Well look, you're comfortable. You can reach like half the mm. engine bay. Got my jerky that far away. Oh, beef that jerky. Munching on jerky. Ooh, yeah. Very good. So good. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, my loom's here. I'm just working out how our coil, new coil loom, is going to measure up and so how we're it's going to run. We're going to add some wires for stuff we don't have, like yeah. coil on plug ignition. Yep. But we're going to use the factory wires for stuff we do have, like our injectors, throttle position sensor. Yeah, so I'm going to try and piece together uh, an adapter harness. Cool. So we can just keep the plug yeah. as it is. Um, it's a really, really common plug as far as cars of this era. Yeah. Um, every Evo had this plug oh, of this generation. Lots of Toyotas had this plug. Yep. Uh, RX-7, there was really? a model or Full two time. that had this plug. Really, really common. Uh, WRX as well, actually. 93 yeah, no. all the way through to 98. Cool. Um, all had exactly the same plug. So it's really, really common. Yeah. So I'll just make an adapter. Um, we will have to probably just do a bit of multimetering. Uh, there's a lot of diagrams. Oh, for, for this combination. Because this engine was in Celica. 3S and GTE. Yeah, heaps of other cars. I hey. just want to make sure that we're going to get the injectors in the right place. Yep. If the coil wire is in the right place, coolant temp is in the right place. Right. At least if I know those core wires are in the right place, I think we'll be pretty right for the rest yeah, of it. Right. Um, and then we'll make a couple of breakouts for uh, the Yaris coils that you're going to put on this. Yep. Uh, we'll make a breakout for the air temp sensor that you're going to put on this. Yep. Uh, maybe an oil pressure. Yep. I'm not sure if I brought one, but we'll have a look. We'll um, work it out. We're going to do flex fuel no, on this car. Not no, now. Cool, later. so we don't have to worry about that. Maybe but we later. can add it in later, yep. so that's pretty cool. There'll yep. just be a connector that we can hook up. Sweet. And then what's so close, that's the thing, if you want to do that stuff, oh. you, it's half a metre of wiring, yeah. attach it, plug it in and keep um, going. Yeah, it's grommets the right there, it's ready to go. Um, we can remove whatever 
Yeah. 90s Japanese no. integrated stuff is maybe working or not working. It's gone. In the bin. In the bin. Put the new stuff in. In the bin. Have a good time. Great. Eat some jerky. Awesome. Mad. Let's do it. I know you can stay in there, man. <laughs> How good is it? Yeah. Look, no, everything it's, you um, need. It's actually really good. So we can just use the grommets that are already there. Yaris coils are an excellent bang for buck way to get coil on plug ignition onto your old car. It does away with distributor rotors, caps, lead and other mechanical bits. The original MR2 system is capable of making big power, but I prefer the reliability and flexibility of this more modern setup. Luckily there was a Yaris in our lives recently, so I rescued the coils before throwing all the useless parts in the bin. It was a big bin. We're going to control them and everything else with our Haltech Elite 1000. This is perfect for a four-cylinder streetcar being that we don't have an electronic throttle to worry about and it will be a breeze to tune. We're also adding a wideband oxygen sensor, boost control and air temp sensor. brings me great joy deleting all this old 90s junk that just doesn't need to be here anymore because it's 30 years in the future and we can do it neater, simpler, with updated components that are cheap like Yaris coils, well free in our case because they came off Yaris Hilton, thanks Yaris Hilton. So just pulling out the resistor packs for the injectors, it's got the old school injectors that need resistor thingies to make them squirt, we don't need that anymore so that's going. So is a coil, this is a coil and the ignition module. So one coil distributor distributes to all the sparks. We're getting rid of that. And now we fire the coil packs individually. It's just a nice modern new way to do it. We can do it with our help team. Some very smart people in Japan would have had this car on the drawing board in the mid eighties and were working with the available tech at the time. A lot of this stuff is miniaturized now as electronics have become optimized, smaller and better at managing heat. Toyota also had its own peculiar ways of doing things, different from many other manufacturers. They don't all make a lot of sense, but you can't argue with the fact that their cars often outlast many other makes. Camrys, anyone? The plan is to slowly check each wire to confirm its circuit is where it's meant to be cross-referencing this with the ECU pinout and the wiring schematic for the car. The only problem is, a lot of it just doesn't work. Davo, Hello. I'm noticing as we buzz this out yeah. that none of the colours on my end match the colours on your end. No. And nothing on your diagram no. matches the pins. For both cars don't really know. And I feel really bad about this, but mm. all that work you've done on that connector mm. potentially is a waste of time. I'm going to say we abandoned ship on the adapter um, purely because of even just this connector. Look at it, man. It's, it's so rough. had so much current being pulled through it. Yeah. It's actually melted. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. I thought so it would just wear from going in and out, but no, it's no, like No, so the contact melted. was making such bad connection on the pin that it's actually created so much heat that the plug has started it's melting. Melted and the pins are falling Gosh. out and they're melting together. So 30 years old and... Oh, and wow, there's they've a, been soldered. There's a cut nah, and shot man. performed nah, that's, as well. What do you think the solution is? Chop back past all the cut and shot into fresh wires, put some Haltech plugs on it, done. Yeah? Mm, yep. yep. <laughs> I only agree because we don't have another Oh, well, that's option. what we're well, doing then. I mean, we that's could rewire the entire engine also but no plug and pin please makes sense. well because also the connectors on this side are so crap as well you don't want to disturb them and try and repin yeah. the factory stuff yeah that's the or just old. buy new stuff again which doesn't yeah. seem necessary no, no. I, when, you know what, when we can fix we can we can repair and yeah hopefully fix what i'm all there. for the plug and pin partly because the engine's actually fairly simple too yeah Injectors, we coils. actually don't need that 
much triggering. to make this run. No. We need the triggering, we need a coolant temp, we're wiring in a brand new air temp, a boost control sign, we've done our coil wiring, um, which is all brand new. There is a oh, throttle position, of course, uh, map sensor hose. If the injector stuff's a bit weird, we'll just make an injector loom. I mean, it's not that hard to work on this car. I just, I just need the... So, okay, I will go and get started on... Thanks, Dave. That for you. I'm sorry, Dave. All good, man. It's this car, man. Yeah, man. It fights it's and good. fights. It's no buggy. Cool. See you tomorrow, Dave. Bye. Bye.